Hey, we look at the absolute value, uh, writing it as a piecewise function. Uh, this is a real classic um, AP kind of skill that you need to have. Uh, this PowerPoint slide or slides, uh, Google Slides, was originally made by Amy Talbot. Uh, graduated in 2016, um, went to UConn, I believe. She loved puppies. So there's a puppy. So the thing to keep in mind about absolute value is everybody understands that whenever you take the absolute value of a number, the value you're going to get is positive. Um, so if your number is five, you, you you take the absolute value of five, you still get five. It's not very exciting. And likewise with eight, if you take the absolute value of eight, uh, your number stays positive, so you still get eight. But if you have negative five, uh, you negate the negative. That's an easy way to think of it as opposed to always making it positive. It's a more uh, functional way to think about it as opposed to just making it positive. You negate the negative. But likewise, with um, the negative eight, you take the opposite of the negative eight or you negate the negative eight and you get a positive eight. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, graphically the absolute value function. Uh, so here's the graph of y equals x, uh, which is not very exciting. It just goes to the origin. And then here's the, the graph of the absolute value of x, uh, which is a v, which hopefully you know. So um, what ends up happening is um, this part here to the right of x equals 0 is the same as this thing right here. So absolute value of x and y equals x are the same when you're talking about x values greater than or equal to 0. Uh, well, less than or equal to 0, uh, the absolute value of x, all these values are positive because th that's the trick. Absolute values uh, function is values are always positive. Um, but how do you get the y equals x to turn it into the absolute value of x? Well, you take this negative part down here, and then you negate it. So you make it positive, um, so you flip it up. So all my negative values are negated. So everything down in the third quadrant gets flipped up into the second quadrant. So therefore, I have all positive function values, regardless of what my input is. So if I have negative values for the absolute value of x, they're still positive. Uh, so let's look at how you write that in a piecewise uh, function. So uh, what we want to do is uh, my if my x is bigger than 0, um, I'm just going to write my x values are going to stay the same um, because of what I saw back here, that uh, absolute value of x and y equals x are the same, regardless, um, provided the x values are positive. So, so therefore, if x is greater than or equal to 0, I just keep the same x values that are inputted into my absolute value of x function. And if I have negative x values, which are x values are less than zero, um, you just negate the input values. So all these negative input values are going to now become positive. And traditionally, you just put the equal sign on the zero one uh, because nobody wants to have the negative. If you have an equal sign down here, you plug in zero, you have negative zero, which is just kind of weird. Uh, ignore this little blue line up there. So the next one we're going to look at is the absolute value of x equals three. The first thing I do with the absolute value functions is I set it equal to zero. So what value makes this absolute value function zero? Uh, that would be three. Pretty easy function. You can do that in your head. Uh, so the way we write that in a piecewise um, value is piecewise function is um, you just leave the function as it is, and that's going to be when our x minus three values are positive. So that's to the right. That's the right-hand side of the V, and we'll look at the graph in a minute. And then when I have negative x values, or when x minus 3 is less than 0, I negate all the input values. So I want to rewrite the piecewise function as the following. Whoop. Sorry. Um, so therefore, I just move the 3 over, and I get two inequality statements, where x is greater than 3, um, which is um, the right-hand side of my piecewise function. It's just going to be the original function, x minus 3. And the left-hand side of my piecewise function, I negate the x minus 3. You can write it as that, or you can write it as negative x plus 3. It doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at the graph. So here's the graph of y equals x minus 3, which is a line that goes through um, 3 comma 0. Um, so it's uh, positive when x is bigger than 0, and it's negative when x is less than. Uh, x is greater than. Uh, x is greater than 3. My function values are positive. X is less than 3. My function values are negative, but if I want to make it the absolute value function, I don't need to change the right-hand side, the values that are greater than or equal to 3, so I don't need to change those function values. That's just th those two parts are the same. I need to negate all these negative values to make them positive, so that's how this gets over here. I just negate these, func these negative function values here and make them positive over here. So that's why I have two different pieces to my piecewise function, um, which is written here. I leave my input values alone if it's a positive, or excuse me, x is greater than or equal to 3, and I negate them if they're less than 3. And there's more puppies for Amy. <laughs>